I, I could sit here and talk and go over all these scenarios where having the difference of three to two is worse and why this does this and why this does this. No, I'm not wasting the time. This card was broke as fuck. Broke. So broken. Why this card existed, I don't know. Get out of here. Go. Leave. Welcome back. If you are joining again, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If you are a first time viewer, my name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works. And uh, today we're going over the patch notes. Whew, I got pretty big announcement that I'm going to uh, mention a little bit later in the video <clears throat> about uh, just some, some upcoming plans. And what I do want to say is as we get into these patch notes, uh, there's actually some cards that I was right about. Back from my top 10 worst Legends of Rune Terror cards video. Uh, that link is below, and we get a card right up here. And on top of that, there was uh, at least one card that I could think of that I was dead wrong about as far as it being a bad card. And, you know, I'm a little disappointed in myself, but hey, you live and you learn, right? So, with that said, let's start getting into these changes. All right, so first up, we have the King of the Nerfs, King of Rune Terror at this point. He is being dethroned. Hecarim and wow, I am so happy to see this sort of nerf too. I was kind of concerned with Hecarim They were gonna nerf him into oblivion because of how strong he's seen and how much everybody was playing him But nope in typical riot fashion They did quite a uh, quite a good nerf in my opinion where they reduced his health by one on both levels So level one and level two they made his spectral riders have one less attack Which I think is probably the biggest deal with the nerf here. So it's a little less aggro-y um, so he's not going to just be splashed in random decks because of his level 1 being so, you know, ridiculously strong. Uh, but his level 1 level up effect is now one less ephemeral, uh, you know, attacking ephemeral in order for him to level up. Which also translates into a level 2 where all ephemeral attacking allies are getting 3 extra attack points. So uh, they kind of nerfed his base level. They buffed his uh, second level a little bit, which I think is perfect. And this is exactly right. Mentioned this in the update as well. Uh, if you go on their website, link to that will also be in the description below. They want him to be played in more of the archetype that they envisioned him being in, which is ephemeral, obviously. And uh, by making his second level that much more powerful and a little bit easier to level up. Uh, that's the goal that they're working towards. I think this is perfect. I think the difference from 6 to 5 health is also very big on his first level because uh, there's a lot of 5 attack units that can now take him down. Uh, specifically, Demacia comes to mind uh, playing Succession and things like that. So I uh, definitely love the nerf to Hecarim, finally. All right, so Callista, everybody's freaking out about Callista. They're like, oh my god, she was just like nerfed again. All right. She, she was not nerfed. All right, so her health is now increased by one. So she's a 4-3 with Fearsome. However, she doesn't have the plus two attack to the unit she attaches to on that level one. Which, yes, you can see that as a nerf. What I will say is the two to three health is a huge difference. Okay, so that right alone is, is great. Uh, she'll definitely have a little bit more stickability on the board. She'll stick around a little bit longer. The level up now... It's a little bit different. Uh, it's kind of similar to her very first, uh, you know, Callista. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have been playing since the beginning of the game, um, she's been reworked like, you know, two or three times already. Uh, now, her, when she attacks on her second level, she will now revive the strongest ally that died as an ephemeral unit. And now that unit also takes all damage that Callista would take. So even if the unit only has three health and you block Callista with a six attack follower, that three health ephemeral unit will still take all six damage. So she, again, sticks around a little bit longer. That level two also got buffed to a 5-4. So that also has a little bit extra health. Um, I see this being maybe cool in some sort of combo deck that revives something. Um, you got to keep in mind that if your strongest unit is something like Rekindler, you summon the Rekindler and now that Rekindler is summoning you know, some other strong ally champion. That might be an interesting concept. Um, so there's a lot of cool, unique ideas from Callista's new effect. 
Uh, but I still don't really see her being played too much. I'm sure people will experiment with her because now everything's new. Yeah, I, I, I'm waiting until probably another set release until she really sees any sort of uh, playability with maybe like a new card or something like that, especially competitive. With that said, they also nerfed Black Spear. And that's just straight up nerf. Uh, they made it cost three. And I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I love cards where the player of the card gets rewarded for meeting the criteria or the trigger effect, which in this case is having one of your own units die to get a decently stronger effect than you'd normally get for two mana. So if you're saying Mystic Shot is two mana, that usually does two mana, two damage. You just pay the mana cost, you get the damage. In this case, Black Spear, you're getting an extra damage at the cost of killing one of your own units. So that was kind of neat. And it was kind of, you know, synergistic with, uh, you know, all of Shadow Isle's followers and stuff like that. Making it three mana, I think, is a little bit much. And honestly, I mean, I guess not technically it puts it on par with Get Excited. Get Excited, you're discarding a card. With Shadow Isles, now you're killing a unit. So I can see maybe that was kind of their thought process to kind of even things out across the board, uh, across multiple regions. But I don't know. I, I think playing around Black Spear was actually kind of fun too. You know, you knew your opponent couldn't play it unless one of his uh, followers died or her followers died. So. I don't know, I don't totally agree with this, but unfortunately it does also retroactively nerf Callista a little bit more because if you draw two Callistas, you get a Black Spear in your hand. Now it sucks. I don't know. Man, they just don't like Callista. Vanguard Lookout. I it's elite. Congratulations. Woo! Alright, now we get to the Mage Seekers. So all the Mage Seekers pretty much got an entire rework. Uh one of them's kind of the same, but this one. Mage Seeker Insider, uh, I think is the worst of the three. Uh, so for four cost, you get a four, three body. If you play a six cost spell at any point during the game, it now becomes a six, five body. So a four mana, six, five follower. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty strong. It'd be great. You know, if you could get it on turn four, uh, it'd be very hard to get it on turn four. You'd have to do something like a uh, you know, skip your first turn, skip your second turn, play succession on turn three. Now you get a five, five body next turn. Now you get the mage seeker. So now you have like a five, five and a six, five, you know, but that seems really restrictive. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen all too often. You're really relying on a pretty, pretty like just a very specific draw. Right. So, um, I've already seen this deck be played all over the place. Uh, they have all the mage seekers in it. It's basically Three copies of this Mage Seeker, three copies of the other Mage Seeker, which we'll go over in a second. Lux, Heimer, they play a bunch of six cost spells. I don't know. I don't think it's that great. Uh, this, I don't think, has any potential to get stronger as more sets release as well. Uh, so I, I feel like this will probably get some sort of minor buff again in the future. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. It's, it's very okay right now. So Mage Seeker Investigator is the next one. This is the second worst or second best is three of them so whichever way you want to look at it and this one i don't know it i think they messed up the card text uh, i think it should say play and then you know the effect because as of now the text kind of matches the other mage seekers right and the other mage seekers like the one we just went over it will get plus two plus two wherever it is so if the second you play a six cost spell it gets activated so technically if it's in your deck It'll come to the top, and when you draw it, and it, it, you know, it gets added to your hand, it's getting the plus two, plus two. Now, granted, I don't know if it technically has plus two, plus two in the deck. I, I don't, you know, there's no way to know that, and I don't know if Riot has clarified that or not. But it definitely has it in your hand. And with this one, with Investigator, that leads me to believe that if you play a six cost spell while it's in your hand, it just randomly adds a detain to your hand. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that's you know how they intended it to work i think they intended it to be played and if when it's played at that point during the game you've played a six cost spell it gets activated you get a detain with that said again i think this card is just okay you're gonna see this card compared a lot to vanguard sergeant uh which is the three three get a four demacia in your hand that's more proactive you just get it right away you don't need to meet the condition of playing a six cost spell so that is inherently better than this card you could argue detain might be a little bit better than for demacia so in that aspect this is just a control version of uh that vanguard sergeant so i don't know i it just seems a little not as good a little less good than vanguard sergeant um you know vanguard sergeant is played in bannerman zed right now so it is seeing play 
this would theoretically see play and control, but I don't. I think there's just better control options. You could just play detain. And the thing about playing this and then having detain is your opponent is not prepared for the detain. You could play a mind game with knowing that you have detain the whole game. It'll just mess with their head, I guess. But again, I just think this card is okay. And last but not least with the Mage Seekers, we got Mage Seeker Persuader. This card is great. Uh, I think this card will continue to get played in any Lux specific decks any strategies that involve six cost spells this is an instant to include you have a three two body which is already good then you add challenger plus one plus one uh, it's just good it's just a good card and you can play this turn two and not feel bad about it uh, so just i think this will be played in the future i think it will have a place as a lower cost follower in a higher costed deck so most of the six cost decks uh you know obviously you're going to have higher costed cards uh, sometimes it's hard to fit lower cost followers into a deck like that maybe some sort of ramp deck right so um, i definitely see this being played in those sort of decks in the future as well all right guys hold up one second so i have a quick announcement to make um so in light of everything happening right now oh but actually also by the way like the video if you like the video if you're new don't forget to subscribe as always uh you get the alerts when stuff comes out and and you're gonna get more alerts now that yeah that's the announcement so as i'm sure most of you can imagine with what's going on i am now at home a lot more often at least for the for the time being and uh that means i got all sorts of time in the world to make lots of youtube videos lots of room terror content cannot wait so things are going to be ramping up for this channel very very soon probably over this weekend uh, you're going to have this video. I'm going to be releasing the video on Monday and probably at least Monday, Wednesday, Friday again, which is what I was doing in the past. Maybe even a fourth or fifth video moving forward. So um, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Again, I hope everybody's staying healthy. I'm going to stay as healthy as possible and try to put out as much content for you guys because you guys are probably sitting on the couch too wondering what the heck to do with your lives. Obviously, it's watch my channel. Let's be real. All right, now we have uh, some token cards. So first up, we got Crowd Favorite. Uh, basically, they just nerfed his health by one. I love this. I love, I love what they're doing with this. I love what they're doing with the elusive units over the last couple of nerfs. Essentially, they're making him more, um, more type specific. And what I mean by that is he is an aggro card. Crowd Favorite is an aggro card. It's played in Spider Aggro. He has Overwhelm. He gets additional attack and stats for having more units on the board screams aggro they don't need health aggro focuses on attack they don't need health so making it a little bit more killable i think is perfect if you could go to zero it'd probably still be good i don't think they can technically make a card with zero health because then it insta dies if there's nothing on the board I, I don't know how that would work but it's still good it's still a great card and now i think it's perfectly uh statted so to speak uh, so that it's balanced and still has, I guess, a slight weakness in its health. And we have the two token buff cards. So one is Iceborne Legacy. I, you know, I'm up in the air. Both of these, you could argue a nerf or a buff. Uh, I, I do tend to believe ultimately they're going to be buffs. Because I don't think token is that great right now. I actually made a video for token spider deck. Link below. Card up there, as usual. And... That deck, I love that deck. I think it was super fun. Uh, that was back when Iceborne was a burst speed spell. It's now a five cost slow speed, but you get a much bigger reward with the plus two, plus two. So that's how you could argue it's a buff. The problem is when it's not burst, it's now uh, it's now negatable, or as a lot of people say in Runeterra, fizzleable. Is it fizzable or fizzleable? Fizz fizzleable. Uh, now I'm thinking of Fizz from League of Legends. All right. So, anyways, if they, for instance, let's say you target a spider uh, token, a spiderling, and they vile feast it after you target it with Iceborne Legacy, it will resolve killing the spiderling before your Iceborne Legacy goes off, and it ixnays the Iceborne Legacy. Now you don't get jack shit. All right. So, it's that's that's a rough feeling. Uh, you can also be denied, obviously, but now you have basically multiple denies you have to keep an eye out for you know you have um grasp of the undying you have vile feast you have get excited you have mystic shot you have all these things that can kill whatever it is you're trying to buff but if you do get this off you get plus two plus two now actually before i go into this this argument that i have this idea let's go over the uh the other card which is pack mentality now pack mentality is still costing seven 
Uh, however, it now does not target the tribe on the card. So before it was like if you had a spider, it would buff all spiders on your field for the end of the turn, uh, which I did kind of think was not that great. Uh, I don't know. It, it just it didn't feel good before. Now it just buffs your entire field plus two plus two, so a little bit less, but you still get the overwhelm. Now here's the other kicker. This card is no longer fizzleable. Fizzleable. Uh, which, that was the chain. They kind of swapped Iceborne and Pack Mentality. So this is good. This is kind of like a 4 Demacia, uh, except it has Overwhelm, right? So it's a little bit different. So you're basically paying one extra for Overwhelm and one less of stats. So it does seem a little bit weaker than 4 Demacia. I'm not going to lie. However, I do think this is great for a finisher for a token deck because of the overwhelm still, right? So now, here's my argument. Before, it felt really bad to play pack mentality, pay 7 mana, and either get denied or just have somebody, again, vile feast a token. Now you're screwed out of 7 mana. At 5 mana for Iceborne Legacy, it doesn't feel nearly as bad. It still sucks, right? still sucks if you play Iceborne and it gets vile feasted, right? It's still a terrible feeling, but... It's, there's kind of this game uh, mechanic baked into Legends of Runeterra, which is like this mana manipulation mind game that goes on with your opponent, right? And what that is is the, the need to basically constantly bank spell mana. It's very important to bank mana in this game to have a response to anything your opponent might be doing. So at 5 mana for Iceborne, it's much easier to hold 5 mana yourself and have your opponent either use all of their mana or get down to like one mana or something where they're out of range of using any sort of removal on your tokens than it is to have seven mana and have that same situation come up, right? So does that does that make sense? So basically you were never gonna get pack mentality off because nobody is going to if if you have seven mana still, they're not gonna they're not gonna expend all their mana. They're just not going to put themselves in that situation if you're playing at a, at a higher level more competitively, right? Uh, with Iceborne, there's a good chance you might be able to get them into a position where they need to expend all their mana, and now you have a free Iceborne legacy that you don't have to worry about being denied or, or you know, vile feasted or anything. So, uh, overall, I think both of these changes are good. I don't think it's still, I don't think it's that great of a deck yet. But I do think that token, some sort of token deck is going to come from this. I think it's great. It uh, should be noted too that something like Elixir of Iron, being that it's also in Freljord, can be paired with this to kind of negate the, fizz the fizzling effect. So if they Vile Feast your Spiderling, uh, you can, you know, Elixir of Iron it and then save it and then you're good to go and you still get the effect off. Poro Snacks. Sure, it's three mana now. Uh, I don't think anybody cares. Maybe Poro will be good one day. <laughs> okay, Elnux, they 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 left in the notes a hypergeometric calculator. You know, they use their hypergeometric calculator. What the fuck calculator were you using to land at six? This thing is nerfed into oblivion. Like, all the Ezreal decks, all the control decks, everything that was using Elnux is screwed now. Now, what I will, what I will say is that because of Elnux... Even control decks and aggro decks felt like mid-range decks. So it kind of screwed with the whole aggro mid-range control thing. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, I think 7 would have been okay. Seven's a great number. Everybody loves the number 7. Hell, did they test 8? I feel like 8 might have been doable. It might have still been a little strong, but it might have been doable. I don't know. I think 6 is too much. I don't really like this nerf. Um, I do think they needed to be nerfed. Don't get me wrong, but I think this was just way, way, way too much. All right, now on to another elusive. So little by little, we get little elusive nerfs along the line. I like this one. I will admit, I got this one dead wrong. This was one that back when I did that top 10 worst Legends of Rune Terror cards, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I done did screwed up. I thought this card, I don't know what the hell I was thinking to be honest with you. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like I, I was saying this card was, I was thinking that it was a cost to bounce a unit to your hand. I don't think I really had the card pool knowledge at that point to, to put two and two together that this with something like Omen Hawk or, or really any of that crap would be really, really good. Uh, obviously it's really, really good. It's like one of the best decks in the game right now, if not the best deck in the game right now. So uh, this card was great. It's now got two attack instead of three, which I think is still good. This with Omen Hawk is still good. This with any other of those bounce cards is still really good. So 
Um, I definitely think this is a great nerf. They also are now, they have all the elusives in line with having lower attack stats, which is what they said one of the goals was, because obviously elusive, their goal was you can't block them, but they have lower attack. Obviously something with high attack you can't block, that's just broken. So I'm glad to see this change 100%. Chump Wump. So another hit to the Ezreal deck is now a 4-3. Um, I don't think it's a huge nerf. I think this actually could have gotten to 3-3 three, three and still be pretty good because you are still getting two free cards, which is really good in a lot of different deck archetypes. But the three health from four health is definitely a big deal, um, especially with a lot of like quick attack stuff. Uh, you get excited. You can also uh, be vulnerable to that now. So it's just not as great of a blocker, uh, which I think is good. I mean, control shouldn't be able... A controlled deck should not be able to have a huge body on the field that blocks over and over and over again, unless it's like literally like a 0-12, you know, like something like that that's control-oriented. But we don't really have one of those. Well, we have one that when it attacks, it gains four attack. But that that's a whole other card. So, um, so yeah, I think this was a good nerf. I think it's okay. I think um, Ezreal decks are still going to need to play this. Other combo decks, Teemo decks and stuff. So, um, an, again, another good nerf. Flash of Brilliance, another card that was slightly nerfed. Now you can only get six plus cost spells. I think this is a great nerf. I don't, well, I, all right. I wouldn't even call it a nerf. All right. It's more of just like a sideways. I wouldn't call it a buff either. It's like sideways. Um, the one, the reason I say nerfed is because specifically Heimer, it was so cancerous to have like two or three of these played and then also get three cost spells off of these when your opponent has a Heimer on the board. Now you have a full field of three one elusives because of Heimer. And <laughs> I wanted to, like no not cool so this kind of uh tones that down a little bit obviously you can still get these and get excited and stuff and you know get three cost elusives that just makes it less cancerous um but again you're limited to what you get now although the cards might be a little bit more game changing because they're higher costing uh your opponent is more likely to know what you're gonna have because there's a smaller card pool uh, but obviously that'll get bigger as more cards are released so i, I don't think that's really a, a nerf either it's just sideways so i think i think good job rummage i love seeing a buff like this it's a very minor buff but this is a very combo card all right it's a very combo oriented card and i like that they're adding this buff now because this card is now cemented as a card that in the future if you're trying to do a combo or an otk or some sort of deck out mill strategy or some just weird weird strategy this card is 100% going to be included a three of because it allows you to just draw through your deck quick and get exactly what you need. Uh, love cards like that. Love cards that enable those strategies and having it able to toss a dead card in your hand if you only have one card is also super, super good. It doesn't become a dead draw or stuck in your hand. And it's also very, very good for uh, discard aggro decks or discard decks in general. Unstable Voltition. I uh, don't really have much here. It got changed to basically reflect the same sort of text that Mage Seekers got. This card is still bad. Nobody's going to play this card, at least for the time being. Brood Awakening. So happy it's back down to five. This does also buff the token you know, version of that deck a little bit more. Uh, it's definitely more playable of a card now. Also feels less bad when it gets denied. And, uh, I mean, think about it. You play this, you're getting 6-3 worth of stats, but in three separate bodies, which is pretty good. Uh, if you have even one other token on the field, now you're getting 7-4 worth of stats with three extra bodies. So overall, I do think this is a good card. Again, I don't think token is going to be that great. I don't think this will be played in like a spider aggro deck right now because um, it's still just a little bit too slow. But I definitely like keep an eye on this card. I think this card will be in a very powerful deck very, very soon. Mark of the freaking Isles. Thank you. Dude. I I could sit here and talk and go over all these scenarios where having the difference of three to two is worse and why this does this and why this does it. No, I'm not wasting the time. This card was broke as fuck. Broke. So broken. Why this card existed, I don't know. Get out of here. Go. Leave. And Rekindler. <laughs> <laughs> and Rekindler is, uh, this was another great nerf, uh, one extra cost. It definitely felt a little broken. You know, you get a 4-4 body for six mana, and if you had a bigger champion out like uh, Garen or Karma or Ash or, or something like that, or even a Trindamir, I mean, this just seemed really broken. 
you know, obviously it limited you to what champions you could play. But right now, obviously getting a Karma or a Garen seems good. You know, you got Spooky Karma, you got the Zombie Garen deck, which also, link to that video below. Um, it just, yeah, it just seemed really broken. So now having it come out a little bit later, uh, costing a little bit of extra mana, I think is the perfect nerf to this card. All right, guys, that's going to do it. And, you know, I'm not going to bother going over the rest of the patch notes. I know all you guys care about is the cards. I get it. Don't worry about it. Listen, I, this game, it gets better and better by the day. I think a lot of these buffs and nerfs are absolutely perfect and on point. Can't wait to start building some new decks. Again, next week, look for the content to rain down. I am souped. So, everybody, again, stay healthy. Stay positive. I hope shit just works for you. And, as always... Peace out.